In this video, we're going to take a look at IP version 4 link local addresses. Now, normally, link local, when I think of it, I think of an IPv6 address, but we're going to be taking a look at IPv6 separately in a separate skill. So for now, let's take a look at the concept of a link local address. So on this network right here, let's imagine this Windows computer has been configured to get an IP address automatically, meaning when it boots up, it's going to look for a DHCP server. That's an acronym for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So it looks for the DHCP server, and if it doesn't find a DHCP server, that can hand it the exact correct IP address it needs and the right default gateway and all the rest. Instead, it's going to use an address based on APIPA, the Automatic Private IP Address. And they're really easy to recognize because they start with 169.254.anything. And although theoretically, if we had a bunch of Windows computers and they all grabbed an address in this range, they might be able to talk to each other. The reality is they're not going to have much success in getting off the local network. And at the end of the day, based on other devices that may not support a PIPA, they may not be able to talk to other devices at all. So if we see that address on a client, it pretty much means that that Windows client was trying to get an IP address dynamically from DHCP services, but wasn't able to, and so it grabbed one of these. So to reinforce that, let's go down to this client PC. Currently, it has a statically configured IP address, and that IP address is 23.1.2.189 with a 26-bit mask. So instead of having that IP address assigned manually, let's tell this computer to get an IP address dynamically, and on this network segment right here, there is no DHCP services set up yet. So once we configure this device to get an IP address automatically, and there's no DHCP server, we should, after a matter of moments, see this Windows computer get an address in this range, and that way we can demonstrate it in action. So let's head over to the client PC, and let's tell it to get an IP address automatically. So here on this Windows computer, let's go ahead and do an IP config just to confirm where we're starting at, so it has an IP address there. We'll also type ncpa.cpl, and that's a quick way that command right there, ncpa.cpl, just to bring up the control panel portion for network connections. We'll right click on the network interface card labeled NIC. From the drop down, we'll click on properties. And then from here, we'll double click on IPv4. And then from here, we'll click on the radio button that says obtain an IP address automatically. And we'll click on OK. And we'll click on OK. And then we'll go ahead back here to the command prompt and hit the up arrow key a couple times and do IP config once again. So at the moment, it hasn't timed out yet on its DHCP services. And once it does, it should get an IP address from the range of 169.254 anything. So it's been another few seconds. I'll hit IP config again. And there we go. 169.254.183.197. And no default gateway whatsoever. So basically, this device might be able to communicate with other devices if they also had the first two octets of 169.254. So let's update our scenario here. Let me go ahead and write out the IP address. So this just got the address of 169.254.183.197. And the mask was 255.255.0.0. So to simulate another device potentially having an IP address in that same range, because it also could not find a DHCP server, Let's just go up to this little virtual PC up here, PC1, and let's configure an IP address on it. Let's use 169.254.1.1 with a 16-bit mask. And then those two devices should be able to communicate with each other just to confirm that we can still communicate locally. And that can just help verify that within the same logical segment here of our network, that two devices that both have an IP address in this range, they can still communicate with each other. But again, it's going to be very limited because they don't have a default gateway to get off of the local network. So let's head over to PC1 and let's configure that IP address. So back at our management computer, here we are on the PC1 tab. We'll do a show IP on this little virtual machine. And its current IP address is 23.12.190. And to set the IP address on these little teeny uh, PC1, PC2, PC3 VMs, the syntax is IP space, then the IP address that you want, slash, and the mask you want in slash notation. So if we want to set up 169.254, we type that in, dot one, dot one, and then slash 16 and press enter. It's going to do a quick check to make sure no one else has that address, or at least no one else responds with that address. So from here, we should now be able to ping 169.254. Dot, and the Windows machine, if I look at my notes, was at 183.197, press enter. And sure enough, we're pinging the Windows computer 
that also has that link local IPv4 address. So again, that's an example of an automatic private IP address. And whenever we see that address, starting with 169.254, it means there's a problem. It means that our client was trying to get an IP address dynamically, that process failed, and it got an IP address from this automatic private IP address space. And in preparation for the next video, I'm going to reset the lab so that our Windows computer once again has a proper IP address and also PC1 will as well. So I'll do that in the background and I'll see you, my friend, in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.